Now, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, they're metaphors for this no good for nothing, racist, semi-colonial capitalist system. And please believe me, capitalism is no good. And I'm not knocking people who have their own businesses. I'm not knocking black people who are into business as long as they're not doing other black people in. I understand that's what you had to do to survive. 90% of black businesses are single, are owned by a single person. And um, that's the second largest employer of blacks in this country. And, and we need more black businesses, preferably cooperatives, where we can get together and pool our money and where the community has an equal share uh, in the wealth that comes out of that, because that goes back to the culture of African people, which is a communal sharing culture. But I'm gonna support a black business as long as it's positive. And the only, the only group that supports black businesses are blacks, by the way. Every other business gets Latinos, Asians, of course, whites, they get support for their businesses from every group. The only group we get consistent support from is Blacks, and we know we could do a better job of that. But that's our sole support base. So when we look at uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, uh, they're metaphors, they're examples for what's happening to a whole lot of our people who are being ground to death through this racist system, um, who are facing hunger, prison, death, higher COVID-19 rates, and a host of other problems. So when we deal with the choice between two cultures, then we have to deal with how these external forces are operating and how they affect our youth, especially. In this show, I'm, I'm concerned about reaching everyone, uh, especially Black people. But the group I'm most concerned about reaching are young black people. That's why I'm doing the show more than anything because uh, too many people in my age group, they just talk to their own age group. They talk to the choir and everybody agrees with them and all the rest of this stuff. I'm concerned about reaching young people but everybody else as well because they're in a special bind but they are the future. And they've also got some answers and they can also, and they are right now providing an engine for change. But the youth are especially caught in a bind and in a trap. Last night in, in preparing this thing for today, I replayed a song sung by Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack is a great ballad singer, also had been a public school teacher. And she was, this particular uh, song about sad young men, that's the song, um, in many ways mirrored George Floyd. George Floyd, when he was 17, was with a group of his partners and they were getting ready to go into their senior year. They were all talking about what were they gonna do in life? And they all had their ambitions. Now, Floyd, you saw a big guy, played basketball, played sports, and went to college for a while um, on, a, you know, playing basketball. Floyd said something that spoke to some very noble dreams, dreams that a lot of our young people have. And I was crying yesterday when I was listening to the Bill of Life. And what Floyd said was, what he wanted to do he wanted to touch the world. He didn't say he wanted to get rich. He didn't say he wanted to be famous. He said he wanted to touch the world. That's the dream of a humane person. It came from a kind and gentle heart. So, so Roberta Flack, true 
to the tradition of black artists who often pipe in on the future. I was singing about a George Floyd before, probably not long after he was born and was seeing things that would happen down the road. It was beginning to happen, but it wasn't clear. And so she sang about young men. She talking about young black men. This applies to sisters too, but especially to young black men in a patriarchal society in which men are expected to be the leaders and the breadwinners and all the rest of this stuff and about their dreams. And so she sang this song. She said, um, she sang about young men who had George Floyd dreams, talking about how they had to kiss their dreams goodbye. She sang about all the sad young men trying to be brave while running from the truth. She sang about all the sad young men singing in the cold, trying to forget they are growing old. She sang about all the sad young men playing at making love, drinking up the night and missing the shining stars. And she sang a hope that their light would guide them home again sad young men. George Floyd had a light to do something for humanity. And George Floyd, as his family has pointed out, was a mama's boy. He loved his mama. Those were his last words. George Floyd's light, light was flickered out by the darkness of cruel, savage, racist hate and the addiction that this system has to arbitrary power. Because when you saw this mad cop with his knee on George Floyd's neck, it was a satisfaction he was gaining from snuffing manhood out of a beautiful spirit. He could care how beautiful it was. Kneeing a person who was handcuffed and helpless, who in a fair fight would have taken this guy to pieces. And when you ask, why did he do it? And this is at the heart of the oppression that our people face. Bottom line is, because he could. That's the reality that every black mother has to face, it can happen just because they can. And so the ethos of Euro-American culture, of Aryan culture, is arbitrary power, which is their demonic definition of freedom. But we have a contrary idea that comes out of our culture. And that contrary idea is Freedom is for the purpose of expressing your God-given gifts to create. That is what freedom is for us. And that is what counters this mad system, only one part of this great culture. So the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Dante Rice, 13-year-old Adam Toledos, um, this has sparked, again, resistance and struggle. Um, and it has, again, put our people in the position of opposing a system that is systemically designed to snuff not only our lives out, but our dreams out. So the nightmare of the rich, the haters, is a nightmare dream in a dehumanized mind and culture that worships wealth, whiteness, power, a despiritualized system 
that is grounded in dehumanization that wiped out most of the planet, but their day for doing that is over. This is the era of the fall of the West and the decline and fall of the United States. You're in it, but you're not of it. And the sooner you get that straight, you'll start to prepare for a new day. So the gentle light that Roberta Flack prayed would shine is a light of the mighty spirit, the light of the human goodness that shines within all of us, especially the poor who've been turned into materially the wretched of the earth. But spiritually are the strongest people gone. As I pointed out in previous show, the people in the Caribbean call the poor, the poor great. You better believe it. Rich in humanity, rich in creativity, and sooner or later, rich in power. So when we look at the George Floyds, the Breonna Taylors, they're mirrors of dreams that the system is trying to crush. Breonna Taylor, a lady who was into healthcare, looking out for the lives of people, you know, getting her little life together, blown away uh, by mad police and still no justice. And there's no justice when you're dead. I don't care what happens, but to see people to just willingly be able to go and snuff out black lives, uh-uh, that's gonna stop. 